Chapter 3 Age of Revolution The period of 1750 to 1850, 100 year span, is recognized as Revolution Age. Age of Revolution While studying Revolution Era, it is necessary to understand the meaning of revolution. The word revolution generally means a revolutionary change in any situation of social life. Due to revolution, a new system based on new value exists after revolution. Revolution is a social battle fought against injustice. There is specific planning and motto in revolution. The great philosopher Victor Hugo says, Revolution is the mother of development. It has a great speed. It needs powerful leaders. In the same way, it needs people's cooperation. Revolution takes place either by violence or non-violence. In revolution, violent means are used on large scale. There is a great change in the society after revolution. Revolution takes place at any part of social life. Example, Green Revolution, French Revolution, Industrial Revolution, etc. Within short span of time, there could be a great changes in the social life in the revolution of the people. For example, due to industrial revolution, drastic changes occurred in political, social, economic, religious and cultural sectors of society. Three great revolutions took place in the world. The American War of Independence, French Revolution, Industrial Revolution. In the North American continent, 13 British colonies revolted against Britain and got freedom. This revolution is known as the American War of Independence. The French fought against Louis XVI Bourbon dynasty, who was very clinical and established democracy. This revolution is called as French Revolution. Industrial Revolution first took place in England and then spread all over the world. The Industrial Revolution brought drastic changes in production resources, means and processes. In the course of time, the effects of all the three revolutions were worldwide. People of the world were impressed due to the principles and innovativeness of these revolutions. The American War of Independence was a political revolution. The French Revolution was a social revolution and industrial revolution is related to means and process of production. Though the influence of these three great revolutions were restricted to the particular countries, in course of time their influence spread all over the world. The principles and concept of these revolutions influence the people of the world. Characteristics of Capitalism First, right to own private property. Second, private profit and self-well-being, inspiration to have them. Third, consumer sovereignty. Fourth, price system. Fifth, least role of the government. Sixth, coordination between social welfare and self-well-being. Seventh, freedom to savings and investments. Eight, right and freedom to select business of our own. Ninth, England was recognized as the world's industry. Tenth, industrial revolution is still incomplete. Its process is unending, so it is known as the revolution without end. It is consistently going on. Rise of Capitalism At the end of 15th century, European sailors searched new seaways and new era in the trading began to take place. Many traders came forward to trade with the countries of the East through sea routes. Financially, it was impossible to export goods to an individual trader. So, many traders came together and started trading. Those who were having original capital 
progressed in their business. Trading with the eastern countries was very profitable, so many companies came into being in Europe. Example, the East India Company. European countries flourished, so the European rulers gave military protection and commercial facilities to these companies. Due to such tradings, the European countries, especially England, became financially powerful. In this way, in Europe, the capitalism era started taking place. The European traders purchased spices, rich garments, commodities of beautifully designed wooden articles, ivory articles, scents, etc. from the eastern countries. In return, they needed to sell only a few articles to the eastern countries. The reason is that only a few things were produced in European countries. The result is that the European businessmen used gold and silver currency for purchasing articles from the eastern countries' businessmen. So, the flow of gold and silver started to take place from Europe to the eastern countries. The European businessmen tried to find many remedies to resist this flow. They started selling articles purchased from the eastern countries into the other countries of the world, except European countries with huge profit margin. Sometimes, these businessmen sold articles by purchasing from one country to another country and they used to buy essential commodities for them. Example, sometimes the British traders purchased garments from India and sold at Indonesia for buying spices and finally used to sell these spices in their native country. They made a great profit in such trading. The European traders presented some precious gift articles to the rulers of the eastern countries to flourish their trade and obtain facilities for them. For example, the tax and tolls, or try, were waved off. They increased their profit. The European traders travelled from town to town for purchasing articles and goods with cheap rates and used to sell it with great profit margin. Europe, especially England, became richer in such trading. The European businessmen realized that it was profitable to deal with manufactured products. So, they developed new production methods and consequently the machine age and the industrial revolution came into being. Importance of trade and businessmen was increasing in the 18th century in England and in other European countries and new directions and markets were opened to the European traders from this trade. Thus, industrial capitalism came forward. Capital economy is based on the large-scale production and its exchange. In this system, there is mutual understanding and cooperation between capital and labors plus industrialists, due to which large-scale production is possible. Means of production are privately owned is the characteristic of capitalism and the manufacturer's motto is to earn more and more profit by producing more goods with optimum producing capacity. Characteristics of Industrial Revolution First, it came into force first in England and then it spread to other regions. Second, in cotton, coal and woods, etc., many inventions took place and they were largely used everywhere. Third, water energy and steam energy proved to be useful to run many machines and human labor was widespread. Fourth, trade and business became more important than agriculture. Fifth, trade and transportation became quick after the use of steam engine railways and boats. Telephone and wireless telephone proved to be quick messaging sources. 
the world came very close to us. Sixth, industrial revolution is not yet completed. The process of this revolution is continued. Therefore, the industrial revolution is continuously ongoing progress. Therefore, the industrial revolution is continuously ongoing process. A. Industrial Revolution Entirely it was a peaceful revolution. Its impacts were lasting longer and deep too. No other revolution had made such a great impact on the world as this industrial revolution had ever made. A true rise of modern industrialization due to powerful and progressive economical technical development in the 18th century is called industrial revolution. Industrial revolution this concept was brought into being by Arnold Toynbee. Industrial revolution was neither a revolt against any existing system of government, nor it was a sudden change in the society. It was mainly a change in the method of production, due to which every sector of life was spirited from their original setup. This revolution was prevailing during 1750 to 1850, the hundred years span. During this span, scientists' performance was meaningful. They created new techniques and maxims. New machines came in place of old machines and weapons. Steam power and electrical power was brought into force instead of manpower and animal power. Cottage industries were replaced by city industries. Production began to take place on large scale and also at a great speed. Transportation needed to be very quickly. In the sectors of transportation and public communications, contacts, there was a miraculous progress. Of course, there were some political and social effects prevailing. Some social problems came out from it and to overcome such problems, new trends of thoughts came forward. Human life changed from almost all angles. Though this was a slow-going picture of revolution, its effects were revolutionary. Therefore, we call it as industrial revolution. Various inventions during industrial revolution. First, John K. Weaver's running shuttle. Second, James Hargreaves, spinning jenny. Third, Richard Arkwright, water frame. Fourth, Samuel Crompton, jean. Fifth, Edmund Cartwright, power loom. Sixth, James Watt, steam engine. Seventh, George Stevenson, railway engine. Eighth, Benjamin Franklin and Faraday, electric power. Ninth, Michael Faraday, Dynamo. Tenth, Davy Humphrey, Protection Lamp. Eleventh, Morse, Wire Machine. Twelfth, Alexander Bell, Telephone. Thirteenth, Marconi, Radio. Fourteenth, Robert Fulton, Boat. Expansion of Industrial Revolution This revolution started in England, very soon reached in other countries of Europe, that is, in France and Germany. France and Germany were already renowned in the development of steel, iron and chemical businesses sectors. Industrialization began to develop speedily in Holland, Netherlands, Belgium, Spain, etc., in America, too, the Industrial Revolution took place. In Russia, the revolution expanded late. In Asia, Japan developed in the sectors of steel, machines, chemicals, etc., very surprisingly within a short span of time. Today, 
This revolution is prevailing all over the world. Nature favors. For industrialization in England, the nature was favoring it. Minerals coal to erect machines and industries were ample in England. England was successful in utilizing them scientifically. Textile industry and trade were the chief occupation in England. This industry was boosted right from 16th century onward. Climate of England was favorable to this industry. Long staple fiber was used to supply from the British colonies of America. Beginning of Industrial Revolution in England England had potentials for the scope to Industrial Revolution, so the revolution took place first in England. English businessmen had already reached far in the Asian continent. England had defeated France in the competition of expansion of the empire. There was no danger to the East India Company of England in the French competition. The British rule had become the rule in India in political field. The British East India Company's rule had sent huge finance to their homeland in the same way from America. The British rule obtained unlimited money and goods. England had used in the development of industrial world. Many historians have asserted that, due to great capital squeezing from India, England started industrial revolution in Britain. Progress in science had already started in England. Many inventions were brought into being by very enthusiastic, brave, innovative scientists. New machines were made. Example, steam engine by James Watt. The rich and administrators in England supported such inventions and their inventors. Such inventors and innovative persons changed the economic lifestyle of England. Due to the religious harassment, many Europeans migrated to England. Among them, there were artists, Craftsmen, intellectuals. For industrialization in England, the laborers were available on large scale very easily. So England could achieve industrial progress. England established colonies in many countries. They received raw material in cheap rates and markets were ready to purchase in their produced goods. England was the main navigational country in Europe. Napoleon couldn't blockade England due to its navigational power and strength. England benefited when Napoleon boycotted buying finished goods from England. The political, economic stability, able government, government businesses and favorable policies of the government helped to develop corporate sectors. Individual freedom to the citizens selected sectors of their choices and the development were responsible for favoring industrial revolution in England. Effects of industrial revolution on environment Industrialization rose due to industrial revolution. Due to industrialization, water pollution, air pollution, sound pollution, etc. occurred. People were affected badly regarding their respiratory system due to air pollution. Due to outcome of poisonous gases from some of the factories, many people had to die. Some of them became handicapped. Unhygienic and dirty water from industries, after mixing with streams, rivers, seawater, polluted water and people suffered from diarrhea, gastro and jaundice, paralysis, etc. Life of water animals and plants came into danger. Due to the growth of cities and industries, filthiness spread everywhere. Problem of garbage became very severe. Due to rising number of mosquitoes, 
malaria, flu, etc. spread all over and the result was that many people died. Inflammables in the industry caused many explosions and hence the lives of the people were endangered and at times deaths resulted. Atomic energy is also used in industrial growth and development. Due to atomic reactors in the industries, atomic rays prevail in the environment and they brought ghastly effects on human bodies. City vehicles and sound of machinery in the industries created sound pollution and men became deaf permanently. Natural resources and minerals are used on large scale for industrial development. In future, there would be possibility of scarcity of such natural wealth. Forest trees are cut down on large scale for industrialization. Farming land and water, etc. are used largely so that there would be scarcity of food and green in future. Due to water shortage, conflicts in the society may arise. In short, due to industrial revolution, evil effects on society are noticed. Effects of Industrial Revolution A. Positive Effects Due to Industrial Revolution, there was the rise of industrialization. First, in minimum span, less expenses, it was possible to produce more goods of quality. Due to the rise in production, people started getting goods and commodities in least prices. People could standardize their lifestyle. Second, economic conditions of the countries where in industrialization took place were developed. Mainly, England and other European countries became rich and they helped to develop other countries too. Third, trade and commerce developed on the international level. It seemed that the world has become only one big market and so, things became easily available at any corner of the world. Feeling of cooperation was also increased. The whole world became one home for all citizens of the world. Fourth, in the industrialized countries, labor movements began to resist injustice and tyrannical acts. Labor organization was established. Industrialists and workers became rivals. But in order to abolish disparity, seeds of socialism were sown. Labor movements, chartists' movements, women's right to equality started taking place in the European countries. So, in Europe, the concept of constitutional and welfare state rooted deeply. Fifth, Cities developed, population of educated people increased. They became aware of their rights and so, in England and France, democratic concept powerfully prevailed. Sixth, due to industrial revolution, new cities were set up. They became the centers of commerce, business and industries. The rural region people rushed to urban sectors. As a result, population of urban areas increased tremendously. Seventh, common man's life improved. Arts and cultural sectors of life dominated common man. Short story and novel became very popular and literature became very rich. Painting and drawings depicted the realities of common man. In the 20th century, film industry was also developed and this is due to a great advancement in technical progress. Eighth, transportation and communication were developed due to industrial revolution. Communication improved drastically. Ninth, in the agricultural sector, new technology was used so labors could be saved and production of grain rose tremendously.
B. Negative Effects of Industrial Revolution First, common man was negatively affected due to industrial revolution. Due to machines, cottage industries were stopped. Many craftsmen became jobless. Supply of labor was more than demand and the capitalists took undue benefit of such unemployment problem. Workers were being squeezed. Women and child laborers were paid less. There was no certainty of their permanent job. No compensation to the labor were caught into accidents. They became slaves of the capitalists. They became more and more weak and poorer. Economic disparity increased in the society. Second, houses for the laborers were very much filthy and negatively compact. Women too needed to rush to the industries for employment. Most of them were extremely tired due to heavy work, so they had lost their joy in their life. The idea of joint family was broken due to the rushing to the urban areas for employment. Labors fell victims to many bad habits in order to forget their miseries and grief. Third, worker became the inseparable part of machine in this revolution. He used to do monotonous work in the factory and hence lost joy and delight in his routine, performing mechanical work only. Fourth, industrially developed European countries adopted the policy of expansion of their business and trade. They started expanding their empire in Asian and African continents. So, many countries from such continents lost their freedom. These countries were being squeezed by industrially rich countries in Europe. Fifth, imperialist nations expanded their religious mission by threatening the colonists and there itself the seeds of the First World War were sown. Sixth, many conflicts and disputes, strikes arose from imperialism. Seventh, a number of civil problems arose due to industrial revolution. People from rural areas rushed in great numbers towards the urban regions. Due to overpopulated towns and cities, problems like scarcity of land, houses, limited water supply, etc. raised their heads. Pollution, ill health, filthiness, etc. became major problems in the society. Eighth, nations became dependent on each other. Example, England imported cotton from America, wheat from Canada. There was danger arising situation when there was revolution or war trade and business suffered very much and consequently common man was caught in tight corners. In this way, the industrial revolution had mixed effect on the social life of people. Points to remember. Change in production resources means industrial revolution. Industrial revolution was evolutionary, but its effects were revolutionary. The British colonies in America. People who came from England frequently to America formed their own colonies. In the beginning, there were many problems before the colonies, but the problems were solved on the local level. The Red Indians, America's native people, started their revolts. Other neighboring various deals were to be finalized regarding agriculture and trading sectors. Suitable administrative system was to be set up for the colonies. In the due course, statutory organizations were formed. These statutory organizations formed and ruled out tax system and other bills and laws after their mutual discussions with representatives. The colonists were anxious to take benefit of the natural resources of America. They never liked others' restrictions. 
England's motherland's control over the colonists was very nominal in the beginning. Restrictions over the activities of the colonists England and France had a war on the problem of the ownership of Ohio and the North American states. The Seven Years' War from 1756 AD to 1763 AD was fought between England and France. This war ended with the Treaty of Paris. England gained Canada and Appalachian Mountain along with the territorial region of the Mississippi River from France. England took decision to keep the above-mentioned region reserved for hunting for the Red Indians temporary. Those colonists desiring to advance beyond west of the Appalachian Mountain were restricted. Consequently, many of the colonists were angry. France was defeated in the Seven Year War, so the colonists became fearless of the attack on them. In the same way, they had no need of the protection and guidance by England. The colonists developed feeling that they became independent for their own administration. Due to these reasons, the colonists became ready to revolt. Delegates Conferences of Colonists The colonists were united against the tyrannical rule, imposing taxes as well as unjustifiable restrictions by England on them. The feeling of breaking of war very soon arose among the colonists against the British rule. They realized that there is no need to act unitedly. Under the presidentship of Benjamin Franklin, the first conference was called for the colonies at Philadelphia on 5th September 1774. This conference is recognized as the first Philadelphia conference. This conference is recognized as the first Philadelphia Congress. The representatives gathered, there was a slogan. The representatives gathered, they gave a slogan, life, liberty and property are our birthrights. The colonists appealed to prepare themselves with weapons by erecting their own troops. England's Emperor George III was requested to cancel the unjust tax on the colonists, but the Emperor denied their request. He ordered his military to break the revolt. Consequently, this conflict rose and there was a clash between the British soldiers and the colonists at Lexington, an American war of independence started to take place. On 10th May 1775, the second conference at Philadelphia was held under the presidentship of John Hancock. George Washington was appointed as the Army General of Organized Troops of Soldiers. The colonies were instructed to be alert and aware of the battle. The president of this conference, John Hancock, declared that our goal is justifiable and we are totally united, not as the live slaves, but we would prefer to die as free mankind. Lastly, England declared war against 13 colonies on 23rd August 1775. On 4th July 1776, the colonists held third conference at Philadelphia. In this conference, Freedom Manifesto was declared. All the relation with England were curtailed. Thomas Jefferson made draft of American Manifesto. It was as follows. These truths are self-evident. All are equal right from birth. Life, freedom and happiness in life are their own rights given by God and the government rule prevails only to protect and prevent all such rights. For that reason, meeting at Paris was held in 1783 for truce agreement. After signing the truce agreement, America was declared to be the free nation. Consequently, United States of America, USA, came into existence.
new taxes and other restrictions. England became financially chaotic due to the Seven Year War. The British Parliament in 1764 AD for compensating the losses in the war from the colonists passed the bill named Sugar Act. Sugar, silk, coffee, alcohol etc. were charged taxes under this act while importing into America. Severe restrictions were imposed upon toll. So, the commercial sector people were fearful in the colonies due to this act. The 1765 Stamp Act also proved to be strict and harsh. By this act, the tax was rigorously charged upon newspaper, coat stamp papers, insurance agreements, documents of the ships faring to and fro, licenses and the playing cards too. Due to intensive tax imposing by the British Parliament on the colony people, there was a huge tide of wrath in America. Under the name Sons of Liberty, the colonists formed organization and rejected disdainfully the Stamp Act by criticizing it very severely. The British goods were boycotted. Breach of law activities in the colonies began. The colonists' protest was so powerful that the British Parliament had to cancel the Stamp Act. Seventeen sixty five Currency Act, Belating Act, etc., such tyrannical acts were imposed on the colonies. Passing the Declaratory Act in 1767, England threatened the colonies that the British Parliament had rights to form laws and impose unlimited rights over them. On the contrary, the colonists retorted insisting that imposing tax on them means denying their rights to individual freedom or their representatives. It's a great tyranny to impose tax without the consent of their representatives, said James Otis, the pleader. The colonists' slogan was, No taxation without representation. In 1767, the British Parliament passed the Town Shend Act, by which they imposed tax on the import of tea, sugar, paper, colour, lead, etc. Again the colonists protested agitated that the British Parliament had to bend and surrender. The East India Company of England was in financial crisis. In order to save the company, England passed one more act in 1773, and according to this act, the East India Company had monopoly in trading tea with America. But the Americans boycotted on tea and insisted on tea drinking coffee drinking in America had become the indication of patriotism. This event is known as the Boston Tea Party. Boston Tea Party Boston Tea Party is the tentative reason for the American War of Independence. The colonists were severely discontented due to unjustifiable Tax imposing on tea. Three ships full of tea boxes were due to arrive to the port of Boston. The ship Darkmouth was set at the port on 27th November 1773. The colonists asked the ship to go back, but this demand was rejected. So, 8,000 Red Indians gathered at Old South Church. By making well disciplined groups, the people embarked on the ship in the night. The same night, 342 tea boxes were thrown into the sea water. The cost of the tea was calculated to be 18,000 pounds. This happened on 16 December 1773. In the American history, this is known as Boston Tea Party, unless tax on tea is paid the British government declared that the port of Boston would be closed for trading.
Consequently, discontent arose and finally American War of Independence was declared due to the Boston Tea Party. Shadow of War England had sent some of the troops to America. New York was its central space. Military force was also called at Boston. Prime point of the tension was the presence of the British soldiers. According to England, the British military force was sent to America in order to protect the lines of control. But the colonists presumed that England wanted to keep in control over them by sending the force to America. By the appearance and the dressing of the soldiers of England, the colonists called them red coats. There were conflicts between the British soldiers and the colonists, invariably. At Boston, on 5th March 1770, five colonists were killed in such conflicts by the British soldiers. It is named as the Boston Massacre. Effects of the War of Freedom It was the first time in the history of the world that a democratic government in the form of United States came into being. George Washington took an oath as the first president of USA. The American War of Liberty proved that every man has the right to revolt against injustice and right to freedom. Many wars were fought for the original rights of human being in the world. Many countries and nations followed the ideal of the written constitution of America. A number of nations in the world took inspiration from the American war of freedom to establish democracy. England had to lose 13 colonies and that was a great blow to them. England had to follow liberal policy regarding the colonies. The French economy became very critical due to the participation in the American Freedom War. The French warriors who took part in the American Freedom War made propaganda of democratic thoughts and importance of democracy after returning home and hence created background for the French Revolution in 1789. The French Revolution is supposed to be the issue of American political revolution. This American Revolution established everlasting impact on the world history. Important Personalities George III, the King of England, in his rule, England-American Colonies War was fought. Christopher Columbus, the American continent was discovered by Christopher Columbus, John Cabot, and Amerigo Vespucci, the three European sailors. Thomas Jefferson, he declared manifesto of the American War of Liberty. George Washington, military journal of American Liberty War for the freedom of the America colonies. Lord Cornwallis, England's military general. Great work of the thinkers. The thinkers played a great role in performing American Revolution. John Locke Milton, Thomas Penn of England, Montesquieu, Voltaire, Rousey, Samuel, Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, George Mason, etc. of America made great impact on the people of America by asserting natural rights of mankind and freedom of man and created a great background for the American Freedom War. Thomas Penn, an impact of his writings. Thomas Penn, the revolutionary thinker of England, expressed his revolutionary thoughts in his books, Common Sense and Rights of Man. He expressed that king's power is not godly. The king becomes dictator when there is unlimited power in his hand. Thomas was always against of the rule of a king and his kingdom. King is a crafty man with crown, he always asserted. 
Thomas Penn was the first thinker in the world asserting about human rights in the world history. He made scientific interpretation of human rights in his book, Rights of Man. He said that the origin of human rights in the nature and people should form a government to protect human rights. There should not be monopoly to form government because in doing so there is no need of heredity. People who loved freedom took inspiration from this book. George Washington, 1732 A.D. to 1799 A.D. George Washington was a great landlord of Virginia. He had taken an active part in the Seven Years' War as well as the wars with French and the Red Indians. He was appointed as the Chief of Army of the Colonies Composite Troops. He was the leader of the American He was the leader of the American Freedom War and became the first president of USA. He politely denied to be He politely denied to become president of USA for the third time after becoming the same for two times consecutively. He developed judiciary an economic system of America, a powerful country in the world. It is said that he was the first in the war activities, the first in peaceful America, and also the first in the hearts of the citizens of America. Points to remember Italian sailor Amerigo Vespucci discovered America in 16th century. England established 13 colonies in America. Virginia, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. The Seven Year War fought between England and France. France was defeated. The war ended with Paris Treaty. The British Parliament imposed tax on the colony. Sugar Act, Stamp Act, Currency Act, Billeting Act, Declaratory Act, Townshend Act, Slaughter at Boston, Boston Tea Party, First Conference of the Colonies at Philadelphia, George Washington appointed as the Military General of Composite Troops at the Second Conference of Philadelphia. Manifesto of American War of Liberty was declared by Thomas Jefferson at the Philadelphia Colonies Third Conference. Lord Cornwallis of Britain surrendered at Yorktown and the American War of Liberty ended. America's United States of America came into being independently. George Washington, America's first president. Thomas Penn wrote, Common Sense and Rights of Man. C. French Revolution The French Revolution was an epoch-making event of the 18th century. France was among the intellectually and economically advanced countries of Europe in the 18th century. During the reign of Bourbon monarch Louis XIV, France was at the height of her glory. French capital Paris had become the cultural center of Europe. Europe was then profoundly influenced by the French thinkers and their philosophy. Within 75 years of Louis XIV's death, however, France lost its glory. The year 1789 witnessed a great upheaval in France. The masses revolted against the French monarchy and brought about his downfall. This political upheaval is known as the French Revolution. The French Revolution is not only a great event in the history of Europe, but the most significant event in the history of the human civilization. The revolution abolished the absolute monarchy of France. It also destroyed the inherent rights of the priests, clergies and nobles. 
the great principles of liberty, equality and fraternity were accepted by the world. Let us study the causes of emergence and the consequences of French Revolution on the world in detail. The Constitution of France Louis XVI pleaded for assistance to some of the European kings. The king, queen and their prince were caught by the masses when they were trying to run away in disguise to another country. The king and his family was kept in confinement. France was declared as Republic State on 22nd September 1792. The king was guillotined on 21st January 1793. The most ferocious reign of terror started in France after that incident. Judicial system in France The judicial system was also based on inequality. The codes of law differed from province to province. The principles of jurisprudence also differed from one social class to another. The judicial spheres were not combined. There were more than 360 legislative statutes at the same time. There was chaotic situation in judicial field. This chaos resulted in resentment of the common people. Voltaire had rightly said about the judicial system of France that the people of France had to alter the laws as one changes horses in his journey from one end to another in France. It was but natural that the common man in France resented this all-pervading social inequality. This discontent of the masses finally expressed itself in the form of a powerful revolt in 1789. France on the Eve of Revolution the French Revolution is regarded as the starting point of history of modern world. During the period between the death of Louis XIV and 1789, there was enormous growth in population, trade and territorial boundaries of France. In spite of affluence, France was dominated by several social inequalities. The French Revolution was outwardly a revolt against a monarchy, but the aim of bringing about social equality was the underlying inspiration. Along with the unsatisfactory political state of France, the social, economical and intellectual factors are also very important causes of the French Revolution. We have to consider these fundamental causes of French Revolution. The tax system in France. The extreme disparity was the speciality of the then French society. The clergy and nobles were exempted from the most taxes in spite of having a large income. On the other hand, the poverty-stricken common people had to pay more than half of their income in the form of the taxes. The common people were exploited under the tax system. They had to pay various taxes like tip, salt tax, tally. Apart from this, they had to take special care of the king, clergy and nobles for their favor. They were treated as born laborers. Carlyle, the historian, described the life of the people like this. Nine-tenth of the French population died of hunger and one-tenth of indigestion. French Revolution had affected the world politics. The ancient feudalism was uprooted from Europe. The people understood that the absolute monarchy is illegitimate and it can be uprooted. This philosophy made many countries pro-democratic. The principle of sovereignty became the important principle of modern social life. The revolution had given the value structure of liberty, equality, fraternity, constitutionalism, and democracy. 
the French Revolution had also inspired many nations for their independence and many societies for liberation from servility. The revolutionary message of social equality motivated humanism and socialism in future. The revolution started the age of nationalism. The French Revolution had radically changed the world's psyche and hence it is considered as an epoch. The French Revolution was engineered by the members of the Third Estate. The Third Estate was not a homogeneous group. It consisted of merchants, lawyers, doctors, teachers, craftsmen, government employees, farmers and serfs. These were the people who were the real architects of France's prosperity. They were responsible for the intellectual and cultural glory of France. The food production of the country depended greatly on them. In spite of this, they were compelled to pay taxes which led to their miserable condition. The French thinkers, especially Montesquieu, Voltaire and Rousey, awakened the masses against the social injustice. Montesquieu 1689 till 1755. Montesquieu was born in the family of nobles. He was a lawyer by profession. After the comparative study of British and French judiciary, he wrote The Spirit of the Laws. According to him, the legislative, executive and judicial powers should be separated. This separation of powers would guarantee freedom, equality and protection of life and property. He protested against the absolute monarchy. He was deeply influenced by British administrative system as it was a fine synthesis of excellences of monarchy, democracy and feudalism. He emphasized the need of changing the absolute and faulty monarchy. His ideas deeply influenced the intelligentsia of France. America has accepted his theory of separation of power. Voltaire, 1694 till 1778. Voltaire was a well-known writer and philosopher. He was known for his satirical writings. His philosophy influenced the people. He wrote the famous book entitled Candid. He was not the proponent of the democracy, but he was a very staunch proponent of individual liberty. He also supported monarchy. The rule of one lion is even better than hundred rats. Volatile criticized French monarchy, selfish clergy, and nobles through his plays, poems, history and biography. Therefore, he was exiled from France. His thoughts motivated the people to revolt against the injustice and tyranny. Rousey, 1712-1778 Rousey was born at Geneva. For his livelihood, he started to work as private secretary, musician and watch repairer. He was a great writer. Rousey is regarded as a pioneer of French Revolution. His books, Social Contract and Emily, became immensely popular. He expressed his political thoughts in his book, Social Contract, Man is Born Free, but later he finds himself in all kinds of bondage. As man moves away from the state of nature, he is subjected to more and more restrictions. For a stable social life, some restrictions are essential. The society willingly accepts them. With a view to ensure self-discipline in this regard, the society creates a political state. Thus, the state is not a divine creation, but is the outcome of a sort of unwritten social contract. 
By implication, it means that if the state failed to abide by the terms of the contract, the people have a natural and moral right to overthrow the state authority. Rousey proclaimed the three popular principles of democracy, liberty, equality and fraternity. Napoleon Bonaparte had rightly remarked, without Rousey, the French Revolution would not have taken place. This explains the philosophy of Rousey motivated the French revolutionaries. Effects of the Revolution The French Revolution overthrew the absolute monarchy of France. Feudalism disappeared forever. The principles of republicanism took deep roots in France. France was conferred upon with the liberty by the republic. There was the beginning of a new age of equality. France attained the new vigor as a result of the principles of nationalism. There was overall transformation not only in political field but also the social life of France after revolution. There was economical stability, industrial growth, national integration, social equality, religious tolerance, improved status, public education system, etc. The rise of Napoleon Bonaparte in French politics is considered as a significant incident of French Revolution. He is regarded as an offspring of the Revolution. Efforts to improve the conditions Louis XVI was crowned as the French monarch in 1774. A man of character, he was kind and well-wisher of his people but was incapable to action. He could form his own opinions. He had read Rousey. He also had honestly tried to improve the condition in France. He did his best to bring France out of the financial mess with the help of Turgot, Necker and Calum, his finance ministers. They opined that it would not be possible to increase the revenue of France unless the nobles were made to pay the taxes. The king convened a meeting of the nobles and put before them the difficulties the country would face if the proposal was not accepted. The nobles, however, were adamant and refused to accept the levy of taxes and any curtailment in their privileges. Finally, Louis XVI was thus compelled to convene the Estate General a representative body of all the three classes in France. The State General was being summoned after a lapse of nearly 175 years. Declaration of Human Rights On 12th August 1789, the National Assembly declared the Manifesto of Rights of Man. It was greatly inspired by the Declaration of American Independence and Philosophy of Rosie. The people were assured of liberty, equality and fraternity. The principles like protection of fundamental rights, freedom of speech, personal property, resistance to oppression, control of masses on economy, sovereignty were accepted unanimously. Social Structure French Revolution was a struggle for the social equality. France was divided into three classes, the first estate, the second estate and the third estate. The social structure of these estates was like strata. First Estate The first estate consisted of clergies. It was again subdivided into higher and lower clergies. The higher clergy was very prosperous class. They were holders of the land. They received a tax named tithe from the layman. The clergy enjoyed several privileges and political and economical concessions. They were exempted from the taxes. 
They were not interested in meditation and religious awareness. They intervened into politics. The higher priests had become pleasure-loving. But the condition of the lower clergy was no better than that of the peasants. Second estate. The second privileged class was that of nobles. They were in possession of a large part of land. They were entitled to enjoy political and economical privileges and concessions. They were free from taxes. They were benefited by political military and judicial posts on hereditary basis. They were governed by a set of laws separate from those meant for the members of the third estate. Luxury and pleasure were the main features of their life. Third estate. The third estate consisted of the common people. The third estate was subdivided into three classes. The middle class included teachers, lawyers, doctors, writers, artists, government employees, merchants, etc. This class was well educated. The financial condition was good. In spite of good financial condition and quality, this class was deprived of prestige and higher posts in the administration. This class raised its voice against monarchy to get prestige and their rights. The third estate included a large number of farmers and serfs. Their condition was very miserable. They were cruelly crushed. The farmers and peasants had to work as bonded laborers. They had to pay heavy taxes. The lower middle class of peasants were considered as inferior class in the third estate. The burden of taxation rested most heavily on them. They were deprived of many privileges. The common people of third estate were compelled to pay one-tenth of their income as tith taxed the clergy, crown taxed the king, tally tax on property wage arm tax, income tax, etc. The clergy engaged in religious work. The nobles were on war front and the common people paid the taxes. This was the social structure of 18th century France. The estate general and the tennis court oath. The members of the third estate suggested that the representatives of all the three estates should sit and vote together in view of the serious financial crisis. The representatives of the first two estates opposed the suggestion as they thought that it would lower their social and political prestige. The king sided with the first two estates and turned down the proposal for a joint session. The representatives of the third estate left the parliament. The hall was subsequently cordoned off by the royal army. The enraged representatives of the third estate assembled on the tennis court near the royal palace and claimed that they alone were true representatives of the people. They declared themselves as national assembly and took a solemn oath to remain united till people's sovereignty was established. This was the beginning of an open confrontation between the feudal power and the common people in France. The king sent orders to leave the hall. Mirabu, their leader, gave a befitting reply. Nothing but bayonet could disperse them as they were thereby the will of the people. Upon this, the king did not take any action against the commons. This was a landmark success in the history of the third estate. Meanwhile, some of the representatives from higher class joined the lower class. The air of revolution reached the army too. The king had no assurance of the loyalty of his followers. Finally, King Louis XVI gave his consent for the combined national assembly. The people took it as their first triumph over monarchy. These events were taking place at Versailles.
the fall of Bastille, the new National Assembly raised civil guards to protect themselves under the command of Lafayette. The National Assembly made many improvements. The king secretly attempted to destroy the National Assembly. The rumors of arrest of the leaders of National Assembly spread in Paris, which made the mob very furious. This mob became rebellious. It made the desperate resolve to attack the fort of Bastille. Accordingly, the people attacked the Bastille on 14 July and captured the bulk of ammunition and freed all the prisoners. Bastille was a symbol of absolute monarchy, social inequality and injustice. The fall of Bastille became a symbol of liberty. This was the first violent incident in the course of French Revolution. Therefore, 14th July is celebrated as National Day in France. The Reign of Terror The Reign of Terror continued for about one and a half years from 1793 to 1795. The first year was marked by terrorism of the extremist leaders. Thousands of innocent sympathizers of the revolution were beheaded by Robespierre merely on suspicion. People at last wary of this bloodshed arrested Robespierre on 28 July 1794 and put him to death under the guillotine. The leadership of the revolution gradually slipped into the hands of military. Napoleon Bonaparte, an intelligent, efficient and an ambitious general, shortly crowned himself as the emperor bringing the French Republic to an end on 18th May 1804. The Works of National Assembly After the fall of Bastille, the discontent increased among the common people about clergy and nobles. As a result, the clergy and nobles abjured the traditional privileges on 4th August 1789. The National Assembly abolished the bonded labor. It cancelled the taxes which were paid to clergy and nobles. It annulled the age-old feudalism. Therefore, 4th August became Social Revolution Day of France. Important persons Louis XIV, an efficient king in Bourbon family Montesquieu Montesquieu, political thinker, philosopher presented the theory of separation of power Voltaire, satiric and ironic writing, pioneer of individual freedom, he was exiled from France Rousey, prophet of French Revolution proclaimed the principles of liberty Equally and Fraternity Turgot, Necker, Callum The Financial Ministers in Louis XVI's Regime Mirabu The representative of the Third Estate The historical tennis court oaths was taken under his leadership Louis XVI, uncontrolled king of Bourbon family during French Revolution tried to improve economical condition of France. He was beheaded on Gulliton as he tried to suppress revolution. Robespierre, he led the extremist party of the Jacobins. He massacred thousands of revolutionaries on mere suspicion. Finally, he was also beheaded on Gulliton. Napoleon Bonaparte, demolished the French Republic and declared himself as French Emperor. The March of Women The King Louis XVI attempted to pressurize the revolution. The King's Act made the people furious. Thousands of women marched to the Palace of Versailles on 5th October 1789. Some disguised men joined the procession. The furious mob imprisoned the king, queen and their son and brought them to Paris and they were kept under house arrest. 
This event is called as funeral procession of Bourbon monarchy. The people were saying that, We have caught the baker, his wife and son. Now we can get enough bread. Mary Antoinette Mary Antoinette was responsible for the unsatisfactory administration of Louis XVI. She was the princess of Austria. She spent huge amount of money in purchasing luxurious articles. She emptied the French treasury. So she gained the nickname of Madame Deficit. When the march of the people went to the palace of Versailles, demanding bread, Maria Antoinette very rudely said, Eat cake if you don't get bread, or else eat butter if not cake. This forced the people to revolt. Important point. France was at the height of her glory during the reign of Bourbon King Louis XIV, 1774. France had to witness anarchy during the reign of King Louis XVI. The king, clergy, nobles occupied the important posts in administration, military and judiciary. They were exempted from the tax payment. The common people were deprived of many rights. They had to pay unfair taxes. Montesquieu, Montesquieu Voltaire and Rousey brought about intellectual awareness. Louis XVI tried to improve the condition. He convened a meeting of Estate General, 5th May 1789. As the proposal of joint session of Third Estate was turned down, the representatives took an oath on tennis court to establish sovereignty. 20th June 1789. The masses attacked the prison of Bastille symbolizing injustice, 14 July 1789. National Assembly obliterated feudalism by resolution, 4th August 1789. National Assembly declared the Human Rights Manifesto, 12th August 1789. National Assembly formed the new constitution, 14 September 1789. French King Louis XVI was dethroned 10th August 1792 Establishment of French Republic 29th September 1792 Administration of National Assembly 1792 to 1795 Reign of Terror 1793 to 1794 Louis XVI was beheaded on Guillotine 21st Jan 1793 Robespierre was sentenced to death, 28th July, 1794. National Convention was dissolved and the new constitution was accepted. The Directory began its administration according to new constitution, 1795 to 1799. Napoleon Bonaparte became the Emperor of France, 18th May, 1804.